news, events, sports. Same time, same place, right in the heart of Isla Vista. UCSB TV is serving UC Santa Barbara and the surrounding community with real journalism. Hello, and welcome back to UCSB TV. All the news, sports, and events in and around Isla Vista. I'm Amanda Marroquin. And I'm Zoe Wilson. We missed you all so much, and we're looking forward to a memorable spring quarter. Tonight, we're bringing you the latest news around Isla Vista and campus. More recently, a partial solar eclipse left our campus with only 45% of sunshine. All eyes were to the sky on Monday, with the eclipse starting at 10.06 a.m., reaching full peak at 11.11 11 a.m., ending the morning with a feeling of new beginnings for astrologers and spiritualists alike. The solar eclipse signifies a new start, having a great influence on zodiac signs Aries, Libra, Cancer, and Capricorn. For the Santa Barbara community, this meant taking a break from their work and school day. Amanda, you saw it, right? Yes, I did. It was fascinating. I was at a local coffee shop here in Santa Barbara and somehow got free glasses and was able to look. Wow. The next total solar eclipse visible from the U.S. will not be for another 20 years. According to NASA, the next day of totality will be on August 23rd, 2044. Wow, what a special moment! In other news, Deltopia came back in full swing this year. Deltopia is an annual festival that takes place in the heart of Isla Vista, Del Playa Drive. Originally created and established as Flotopia in 2004, the annual block party celebrated its 18th year this past Saturday, breaking numerous records from years previous. Jenna McGovern has a story. To you, Jenna. I'm here on Del Playa Drive, where just last weekend an estimated over 20,000 Isla Vista residents and visitors flocked to celebrate the 18th annual Deltopia block party on Saturday. According to the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Office, local law enforcement issued 256 citations and made 32 arrests. These numbers grew substantially from last year, in which the office reported 151 citations and 23 arrests. These numbers come even after the Sheriff's Office's strong efforts to limit illegal activity during that weekend by suspending the restorative justice program for 24 hours, meaning any arrests that were issued cannot be absolved by partaking in the volunteer and educational program. Party hosts at this year's Deltopia also had to obey the Sheriff's Office's new ordinances for social gatherings, in which they had to keep their attendees at a maximum of 250, maintain specific noise levels, and monitor their party goers' behavior for specific prohibited acts. According to the Sheriff's Office, 13 citations were issued because of disobeying these social host rules. UCSB TV will continue to update on this year's Deltopia as more information becomes available. I'm Jenna McGovern. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Jenna. What a crowd, am I right? Yeah, Amanda, and word on the street is that Chancellor Yang was a part of the crowds too. Yang was spotted talking to students and walking along the streets of DP. I think this would make him an honorary gaucho. He really is. According to pictures, he knew to keep his Borg at home and not take a seat on the curb. It should be interesting to see how next year's Deltopia plays out. Crawling on to our next story for tonight, have you ever accidentally eaten an insect? Um, no, I haven't, and I, if I did, I don't know if I'd want to know about it. <laughs> Get this, food critics. UC Santa Barbara students are purposefully eating insects for an edible insect art show. What? I cannot imagine that. <laughs> yep, insects are a potential alternative to a low ecological footprint, according to BCC Wildlife. They produce smaller amounts of greenhouse gases compared to livestock. Perhaps eating them isn't all so bad? Francesca Daggett visited the week-long Glassbox Gallery ex exhibition and has the story. To you, Francesca. Could insects be the food of the future? This week, co-founders of the UC Santa Barbara Edible Insect Initiative organized an edible insect art show from April 1st to April 5th. The insect co-founders are students, Mackenzie Wade and Alex Carlin. The exhibit features artwork and photos surrounding insects as a food source. A discussion panel was held on April 4th with tasting opportunities. So the Edible Insect Initiative is a project that's run by myself. I'm Mackenzie Wade. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Anthropology. And Alex Carlin, who is an environmental studies student. So we are working with Umberto Di Cenove, who is an Italian documentary photographer and filmmaker. And he is visiting from Italy to show his work and his project Insects, which we helped bring in more of a California perspective into his project. 
so often when you see an event or a, uh, anything around insects as food, it's often framed as a food of the future, a future that often is, is depicted as more apocalyptic. This event aims to do something totally different. We are envisioning it as a celebration of insects as food. They're also a food of the present and a food of the past. So we're hoping to celebrate communities around the world who already have insects as part of their cultural cuisine and specifically root it in the California Oaxacan diaspora community, which also produces and consumes insects in our local community. Wade is currently working on her PhD research, which centers around individuals in the United States who are campaigning to better the narrative of insects as potential food source. These crusaders include chefs, educators, and insect company executives. Her aim? To try and encourage the idea that insects can be an ethical, economic, and sustainable food source. Mackenzie encourages people to get involved in the initiative and hopes that the event will spread awareness of the cause. If you have anything that you would like to contribute to the project, we would love for someone to start an insect farm, for example, at UCSB. If you have any of these ideas, uh, we would love to support you in any way that we can. If you would like to get involved, you can reach out to Mackenzie down below. For UCSB TV, I'm Francesca D'Agata. Well, you know what they say, little extra protein never hurt anybody. That's right. It's definitely an innovative recipe given our current food production. According to the BBC, food production is responsible for almost 60% of global biodiversity loss, contributing to overfishing, climate change, and water shortages. So it looks like gym bros need to make room on their plate for chicken, rice, and a side of beetle. Speaking of the gym, let's kick it over to our resident gym bros, Anthony Gill and Ryan Greenberg, who have this week's sports roundup. What's going on, Gauchos, and welcome to spring. I'm your sports anchor, Anthony Gill, alongside my co-host, Ryan Greenberg. Ryan, it is great to see you again, and certainly great to be back in the studio with you. Tell us what we got in store for this week. Good to be back indeed, Anthony. This week, our men's golf team hosted their first invitational of the season at the gorgeous Sandpiper Golf Course. On April 8th and 9th, the Gauchos played three rounds, two taking place on Monday and the finale on Tuesday. The two-day Gaucho Invitational drew some of the best golf teams in the country, including number 43, Loyola Marymount, number 50, University of Las Vegas, and number 60, University of Utah. The Gauchos finished sixth in the first round of the invite, with junior Brian Arnold contributing 69 and going a stroke below par in five different holes, along with graduate Killian McGinley and reigning Big West golfer of the month, senior Blake McGovern, shooting parts, finished a single stroke ahead of LMU. McGovern and Arnold would pick up right where they left off in the previous round. McGovern finished the round with a team low of 70 alongside Arnold, who once again finished below par with a 71 to help the Gauchos remain in sixth place. Ryan and I were in attendance for Tuesday's final round of the Invitational, in which head coach Chris Masoletti provided his takeaways from Monday's performance, as well as his plan going forward with the season finale on the horizon. All right, so this is the only, you know, so to speak, home game on the schedule. So how does the you know, preparation differ for this tournament as compared to other tournaments? Yeah, I think um, it's nice, obviously, being in your own backyard, so the guys are familiar with the golf course, the conditions. Um, could sleep in your own bed, so that's always a nice bonus as well. But the prep pretty much stays the same. We probably play a little bit less than we would in like a normal practice round. So we only played nine holes this time as opposed to 18, just because of the familiarity of it with the golf course. And um, But I think, <clears throat> I think probably one of the hardest things to do is because it's so familiar that you kind of have to separate that now it's a tournament. And so to flip that switch mentally when you're at your home course is a little bit of a challenge for the guys um but i think they've done a, a decent job so far of that but yeah i think that's probably the most difficult part is it's you're playing your course you play probably three to four days a week you know but now there's teams from all across the country here and you're competing and your name's on a leaderboard somewhere so it's just it's a different feel for sure right yeah so since this is the only you know like again home game on the schedule i'd have to imagine you know it, it's circled on your calendar you know it's it's one of the regular season events that you care most about so because you you know it's so important to your team does does that sort of like you sort of parlay this into like postseason preparation at all yes no i mean the idea is we're trying to take i mean the whole <clears throat> from the whole season from all the way back to the fall you know going to the conference championship we're just trying to get a little bit better so this is just a step in the in the in the path i guess but um you know obviously we had a really good event in um 
at Boulder City and out in Nevada. Um, and then we had a good event, followed it up in, in San Diego. So the momentum is, is trending the right way. Um, we haven't, honestly, we haven't played very well. Um, the first, you know, we're midway through the, the, the final round. And um, I think we have very underperformed here at home. Just to think, again, a couple of those factors. We want to play well. So you had the added pressure, a lot of friends and family out. So there's a little bit more at stake, even though it's the same golf course you play all the time. So, um, and I think just being, you know, a couple of young guys um, in the lineup and I'm playing on the second team, it's, it's just new to them. So um, I guess to answer your question, it's, it's another step. And so we're just trying to get ourselves to play our best golf heading into, you know, the conference championship. So what, what we do well here, we'll take as positives and what we don't do, we'll work on and use that for, for fuel for a couple of weeks from now in, at La Quinta. What are the positives that you've seen in the day and a half of golf so far? They really maintain their level of composure. You know, they're 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 very well um, put together. They don't freak out when bad things happen. They don't panic. Um, so they're, they're pretty mild mannered and, and even keeled. So uh, I think we've. We have not putt well this week, which is kind of strange. You know, in your home, you kind of think you'd get a couple of favorable <laughs> lip ins as opposed mm-hmm. to lip outs. But um, I think they're doing a good job of just kind of staying steady. Um, you know, I think, again, it's kind of been our bugaboo all year. We have not played the par fives well for whatever reason. Um, and the tournaments that we have played well, we've played them decent um and again this week's kind of been the same thing we just haven't really taken advantage of those opportunities and um, because of that we're not really not really in the hunt right now Mm -hmm. so something we gotta do better moving forward for sure how does ucsb's course compare to some of the other courses uh, that we golf at i mean i'll i'll let other coaches speak for that but um it's i'll put it this way i've gotten nothing we have i think maybe six or seven teams that have never been here before and they all the coaches and players have basically come up to me like coach i can't believe you guys get to do this every day and i'm like <laughs> neither can i but it's, yeah we're, so it's i mean the course is in phenomenal shape the greens are great the, it's lush it's it's honestly perfect yeah cool yeah mcgovern would continue to top his scores in the previous two rounds finishing the third with a 68 mcgovern placed eighth overall individually with a total score of 210 Despite McGovern's performance in round three, the Gauchos walked away from the Gaucho Invitational, placing eighth out of 13 teams. Men's golf will have a busy week as they make their way up north to Davis, California this Friday for the three-day El Macero Classic, which marks the final Invitational before the Big West Championship that will take place April 28th. In the professional sports arena, devastating news has recently emerged from various media outlets regarding a former Gaucho. Shane Bieber is scheduled to undergo Tommy John surgery to repair his damaged UCL in his right elbow, sidelining him for the rest of the 2024 season and potentially beyond. Bieber, a right-handed pitcher out of Orange County, led the Gauchos to the College World Series in 2016 before being drafted in the fourth round of the MLB draft by the Cleveland Guardians later that year. Bieber missed time last year with the same injury as well, spending time on the injured list from mid-July to late September. Despite the pain lingering around, the Guardians' ace managed to gut out two starts against the Oakland Athletics and Seattle Mariners. In his two starts, Bieber threw 12 shutout innings and registered 20 strikeouts. Bieber's start against the Oakland Athletics on March 28th marked his fifth consecutive opening day start for the Guardians, in which he went six innings pitched, retiring 11 and allowing just four hits, shutting out Oakland with a final score of 8-0. to Being out for the rest of the season, Bieber's future with the Guardians may be put into question as he is in the final year under contract. Though the year plus of recovery Tommy John surgery necessitates is devastating, pitchers are often able to return to their best form once recovered. Time will tell where the 2020 Cy Young Award winner will end up post-injury, but for now, we wish him all the best in his speedy recovery and the best of luck in his MLB future. Moving on to basketball, our very own Josh Pierre-Louis had the opportunity to compete in the NCAA Slam Dunk Contest on Thursday, April 4th in Phoenix, Arizona. The high-flying wing on our men's basketball team finished in fourth place and received a perfect score for his dunk in the first round. Incredible work, Josh. We're all very proud of how you've represented our school, and needless to say, very impressed. For Ryan Greenberg, I'm Anthony Gill, and you've been watching UCSB TV. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Anthony and Ryan. Looking forward to a great quarter of sports on UCSB TV. As spring quarter continues to roll out, stay in the know with UCSB TV all quarter long. Well, that's all we have for you tonight. We'll see you next week with all the sports, news, and events here in the heart of Isla Vista. I'm Amanda Marroquin. And I'm Zuri Wilson, and you're watching UCSB TV.